Hi everybody, my name is Tom and in this video I want to talk about a very important topic and this topic is movement speed and knifing speed. The general rule is the heavier a gun is, the slower you move and the slower you knife. So you see here in the table LMGs and uh, war machines, RPGs and stuff like that have a very slow movement factor but the light stuff like uh, the light SMGs, for example the MP5 or the ballistic knife itself which is very light have a very very high movement factor so important to pick from that table is simply um, that the mp5 and the ballistic knife have a higher movement factor than basically any other gun but for general you can just keep in mind that the heavier the heavier a gun is the slower it is for uh, movement now for the knifing this can vary a lot inside the same gun type for example, the Amtar and the Galil are both assault rifles, but the Galil is drawn up way slower than the Amtar, and this leads to a way slower knifing with the Galil. So I just tried to summarize this here a little bit in that table. Now the first tip I want to give you is when you gather up a train, always equip your lightest gun you have. For example here on the left I have a Mustang and Sally and on the right I have a slow heavy ML LMG. You do not see it especially in this video when you just uh, watch this here. You have to experience this yourself. But the difference is actually massive. When I walk so slow the zombies have an easier time hitting me and I get way more hits when I have the LMG equipped. As well, when I want to gain distance to shoot the zombies, um, I have a hard time doing that with the LMG because I, I sprint almost as fast as the zombies run all the time with that slow movement factor. So you always want to equip your lightest gun. For the shooting, you can of course then switch to the gun whatever you want. This is just meant for the gathering up of the train. And here I actually have a very cool scene where I go down because I get too many hits in the back. So um, we cannot say for sure that I could, uh, could have avoided that down with a, with a very light gun. But if you watch here the slow-mo, you see that I, got, that I get two hits in the back. And maybe if I had a ballistic knife equipped, I would have run so fast that the zombies didn't catch me there. So um, it is always only an advantage if you equip lighter guns. Now when you knife, you always want to hold your lightest gun too. To be more precise, you want to pick out the gun that is drawn up the fastest. Because when you compare those two scenes here, first the pistol, then the LMG, you see that the difference is absolutely massive. So whenever you knife, may it be at insta-kill or in the first few rounds, always hold the lightest gun. Now you know there is the stabbing when you knife from a far distance and the slashing when you knife from a close distance. Whereas the stabbing is nice to avoid zombie hits, the slash is of course way faster. And when I have Chuck, what I do is I always just go close to the zombie to make sure that I execute a slash. There are some tricks you can try to do. For example, you can try to actually knife the air and then quickly point at the zombie. Therefore, you can execute a slash although you are far from the zombie away. But I think this is very difficult to execute. So therefore, as said, I just go close to the zombie and, and make sure that I do a slash then. Normally, the zombie even doesn't hit me that way. Now let's talk quickly about running speed again. In the beginning of the video I've said that the MP5 and the ballistic knives offer you a 110% running speed. But the problem is that you rarely ever use those guns. So what you can do is you can simply hold your turbine and with the turbine you also run at 110% speed. This is very nice to know because denizens attack you less often and your your uh, your uh, traveling speed is increased like hell. So whenever you run a long distance, let's say from power to town or something like that, just hold your turbine. This works also with the turret, I'm pretty sure about that, but I'm actually not 100% sure about the trap. I tried to measure it, but I got some weird results. Important to know is that with the shield, this is actually not working. I think with the shield, you only run at 100%. 
Holding buildables is not only essential for fast running speed, it is also absolutely great for knifing speed. Because I've said it a few times that the drawing time of the gun decides how fast you can knife, but buildables are not drawn at all. They are just there after a, after a knife, and this allows you to knife at the max possible speed. So you can knife extremely fast. And this is especially essential if you want to knife denizens with the combat knife. Because to knife a denizen, it takes you two knives, but you can only knife in that speed when you actually hold the turban. It is possible with the pistol and, and such, but it is difficult and needs a perfect timing. When you just hold, for example, now the turban, you can knife denizens easily with the combat knife. An alternative method to knife faster, by the way, is when you have a semi-automatic gun and you just hold your fire key pressed and then you knife. This leads to a little bug or glitch or whatever you want to call it and your gun is not drawn up after the knife. So you can also knife at the max speed when you just hold your fire key pressed when you have a semi-automatic gun. And here another alternative method to kill denizens with a pistol combat knife combo is when you just shoot the denizen twice and then knife him by this costs you quite a bit of ammo, so uh, you might rather just simply pick out your turbine. Now all of that we have just learned is absolutely essential. If you want to do that common starting strategy, running from the bus depot directly to the town in the first few rounds. You know, it's pretty cool because in the town you have the bank, you have Chuck, the Bowie is quite near and you also reach power quite quickly to activate your Chuck. But the problem is that there is a huge lava pool to pass and this one can be a death trap if you do not follow some instructions. But with all that instruments we have now, like this faster denizen knifing and so on, we can actually pass that pool quite safely. So first of all, when you want to pass that pool, you have to know that the lava is a bit more narrow to the right side and this is absolutely necessary that you pass by the lava on that right side where the lava is more narrow. You see it here in the video, I always pass the lava at the same spot. Then you always want to make sure that you start at full health. You know there is a denizen spawn where the denizen is actually on fire and when this dude is attacking you and um, you kind of take a little bit of his fire damage or when you kill him even before he is uh, attached onto you he will explode and this explosion will, will do some damage to you. So always make sure that you are at full health before you start. Then you of course want to also make sure that no denizen is about to attack you before you start because um, if one is just running to you he will catch you while you are in the middle of the lava pool and that's a bit shit. However it is actually possible to kill uh, a denizen uh, while you are jumping across the lava with the faster knifing and stuff but this may be a little bit difficult so just make sure that no denizen is attacking you before you start. Then uh, while you are on the lava, you always want to uh, sprint and jump. I mean, you actually can't sprint on the lava and the jumping is uh, not helping too much, but uh, it just feels good when you sprint and jump. Then after you have passed the lava pool, two things can actually happen. Either a new denizen is just spawning near the, the green light there, or one denizen followed you across the lava. Now if one followed you, this guy is burning and you have to make sure that he is not uh, coming near to you. Because even if you knife him, um, he will explode and this may kill you. So what I do is I just make sure that I have the turban and I sprint as far away as I can. That way I escape the denizen and and um, um, I can actually regenerate my health before that dude catches me. But of course, uh, when this uh, denizen that is attacking you is not burning, you can simply kill him. I think you can actually even let him uh, attach onto you and it will not kill you. So here in, on the bottom left side you see that checklist and you actually see that uh, uh, um, it, is not, it is not so difficult as it looks on the first uh, look. You just have to make uh, sure to follow these two three points and then this is absolutely no problem so after you practice the after you have practiced this two three times you will do that quite safely and easily here now in the end of this video I just want to warn you, when you hold a buildable for too long the game actually takes it away from you, um, it just disappears out of your hands and you hear that laughing sound. So you do not want to hold a buildable for too long and you do not want to go too crazy with uh, all those advantages you have when holding buildables. 
All right, I know the video got a little bit long, but I hope you could profit from it. Hope you enjoyed. Have fun. See ya. Bye.